CEOs in most publicly traded companies uh, have their pay set by the board of directors. The board of directors uh, is typically a group, let's say that on average they're between 10 and 15 people. They're elected by shareholders to be on the board. There is a system of negotiation just like in any compensation or employment situation where the organization uh, might offer to pay X and the, uh, the or the worker might uh, want to be paid Y. Typically, the worker wants to be paid more and the organization wants to pay less. In the end, the board of directors votes on the CEO pay and approves the CEO's pay. Some people argue, some critics argue, that that's not really an arm's length negotiation. It's not really a fair process and that it's, that it's rigged in favor of the CEO. And the reason those critics say that is because they feel that uh, the individual setting the pay wouldn't be on the board unless the CEO wanted them to be on the board. My own view about this is that we certainly know of examples of, of uh, greed and corruption and you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Uh, at the same time, there are, are thousands of examples of well-run boards where uh, there is appropriate uh, bargaining between the CEO and the organization over the CEO's pay. One of the reasons people talk about CEO pay much is because they know what CEOs make. Every spring, typically, publicly traded firms announce in their proxy statements what the CEOs make. Lots of business publications and other organizations publish these numbers in standardized, summarized formats. And folks can read that a CEO made $10 million or $20 million last year. And they get worked up about that. They get worked up about that because I think it's so much more than what they make. 10 or 20 million dollars is so much more than what the typical person in America or anywhere in the world makes that uh, people get riled up about it. Another reason I think people get excited about high levels of CEO pay is uh, in the circumstance when the CEOs are paid for failure. So CEOs are given a large severance package. Imagine a, a company goes bankrupt and the CEO is fired and a new CEO is hired, but the CEO who is fired has been given $20 million in severance pay. People don't like that. And people think that while they know they can't be a great professional baseball player and earn $25 million a year like a great professional baseball player might make, because they know they learned that when they were 10 years old, they just don't have that skill, they figure it can't be that hard to run a company into the ground and make $25 million. There are many people thinking about innovative ways to fix that sort of a problem. One way I think is important would be to taper severance. Imagine offering severance of $25 million if something goes wrong in the first two years, but that it tapers to 10 and 5 and 0 over time as the CEO accumulates assets within the organization.